Welcome. My name is Ed Richardson. I'm Keystone's Director of Education, and I'm delighted today to be joined by Kate McKenzie. Kate is our LNAT uh, expert, uh, has taught the LNAT for many years, has done uh, many, many, many hundreds of hours, if not thousands of hours on the LNAT, and has uh, written Keystone's Bespoke course on the LNAT. And so today we're going to explore that. Uh, I realise that in using acronyms, uh, some may not be aware of quite what the LNAT uh, means, so this is why we've got Kate here to kind of unpack everything for us. Kate, welcome. Thank you. What is the LNAT and how, uh, and sorry, and who is required to sit it? Hi, Ed. Thanks for having me as well. Um, yeah, the LNAT um, stands for the Law National Admissions Test. So it is essentially um, another aspect of your application to study at university that goes alongside your UCAS application with your academic record and your personal statement. Mm -hmm. Not everybody takes it. Uh, there are a select group of competitive universities that require it. Mm -hmm. um, I won't give a list because it does change year on year out, but you can always find the up-to-date list on the LNAP Consortium website at lnap.ac.uk. Fantastic. Um, so let's think about the, the test itself. Uh, how is it structured? Are there parts to it? Um, if you give a little bit more color to that, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. So the entire test is two hours and 15 minutes long, um, but it comprises of two parts. The longer section is section A, that's a 95 minute multiple choice comprehension test. Uh, so in that 95 minutes, you will read 12 sort of shortish passages, uh, followed by three to four questions. In total, that will be 42 questions. Um, so that's the sort of first section you do. And then the remaining 40 minutes will be an unseen essay. Um, so you'll get a choice of three titles and uh, basically write an argument in response to one of those three titles. And the whole test is taken on a computerized screen. So uh, it's just worth noting that um, if you do start to do prep, you're going to want to practice on screen and the essay is typed, not written. Great. Thank you. Um, the, the million pound question, but sort of how difficult is it? And I guess what represents a good score? Yeah, this is the question I get the most with new uh, sort of tutees. Um, so the first question is easy to answer. Like how hard is it? Quite hard. Um, yeah, the average scores that students get kind of in the, all the previous testing years uh, really sort of hovers around 50%, which okay. um, to put into context, you know, the, the students taking the LNAT are applying to study law at top universities. So they're, mm. they're intelligent students um, mm. and, the, and the average is still only around 50%. So it is a challenging score. I should clarify that that's a score for section A. You, you don't actually receive a score for section B, the essay. Okay. It's, it's used independently by universities in a, a range of different ways. Um, but section A, the average is about 50%. Um, your second question, what constitutes a good score? That's a lot harder to answer because <laughs> there's no pass fail for it. Um, and my answer to that would, would depend on where you're looking to apply, um, how competitive places are that year, and also just how hard the test is that year, because we do see a bit of variation in the difficulty. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that, you know, quite a few universities have sort of published some information about the average scores of previous successful candidates. So uh, we kind of can say that the London schools seem to want in the mid to upper 20s. Oxford um, really want upper 20s because they're really sort of pushing for the top candidates. But that always has to be taken with a bit of a pinch of salt. Um, sure. So yeah, a little bit difficult to give a, a concrete answer, but um, there is no pass fail. It's just about doing as well as you can. Great. And I guess just to close, I realised that you could probably talk for an hour on, on your top tips of preparation, but if you were to distill them down into just a few, um, what would be uh, for, for an aspiring LMAT uh, candidate, what would be the, the key considerations for them when thinking about preparing appropriately for it? Yeah, um, so I would say definitely preparation and well, practice is really required. Um, the, the LMAD is not a test of knowledge, so you don't need to go away and revise a load of different topics. It doesn't test law, for example, at all. It's going to give you a range of topics that might cover law topics, but it, it's going to give you passages on media, politics, education, science, philosophy, a range. Um, the skills involved are really what you want to practice. And so to that end, I would say um, 
there are two LNAP past papers on the LNAP consortium website, mm -hmm. which are a, a, a really good resource there, obviously the most accurate past papers you'll find. Sure. Um, but they don't have reasoning for why the answers are right and wrong on the majority of those materials. So I would also recommend looking into maybe a preparation book that you can buy online with test papers. Um, sure. Because authors there can be quite good at trying to explain why answers are right and wrong, and that can help you to learn the reasoning and pick up those sort of skills over time. Mm -hmm. um, but I really would give yourself plenty of time and plenty of practice attempts to, to get those skills because it takes a while to hone them. Um, and uh, you know, also make sure you do some time practice because um, you know you might do really well on one passage or, or four passages, but. 12 passages, 95 minutes of concentration. Mm. I think that some students benefit from building stamina for that um, and should definitely sort of at least schedule a few attempts at that kind of length uh, in the run up to test date. And then I guess section B is a little bit harder because students come with a range of backgrounds when it comes to essay writing. Um, but I would say that, you know, uh, a lot of students struggle with this sort of argument focused essays. Uh, schools tend to be a lot about writing essays that demonstrate information and knowledge because that's sort of how we test for lots of subjects but the LMAT again isn't really testing your knowledge on a subject more your critical thinking and your ability to persuade so I would say some really effective ways to prepare here would be to uh, look into debates and debate topics mm -hmm. to get that sort of argument focus um, look into critical thinking terms like um, how a, an argument is constructed, what are the elements, what are some strong arguments or some weaknesses in arguments that you want to avoid. And then again, as with section A, just practice doing time conditions because writing an essay on an unseen topic in 40 minutes is, you know, it's a novel experience for a lot of students and that can be quite disarming. So I would say getting ready to deal with that and to learning sort of what your preferred processes with the planning and the writing and the reviewing is is another really effective sort of preparation method. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kate. Some really sage advice there. And then hopefully students will be able to utilise that. Cheers, Ed.